Well, uh, thank you very much, Paui. And uh, uh, I want to thank uh, all of the tribal leaders and representatives who are here for honoring us with uh, your presence and with your time. Uh, I'll be brief because uh, you will hear from uh, true and very deep policy experts uh, shortly, but I'm honored to have this opportunity to, to share with you a little bit uh, about uh, this plan and, and what it could mean. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging, as Secretary Holland did in her confirmation hearing, that I'm speaking to you from the ancestral homelands of the Nacochtank, Anacostan, and Piscataway people. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak to you in the context of the government-to-government -government relationships that our administration is eager to sustain and to develop in the days and, and the years ahead. We acknowledge that our federal government has often failed to live up to its duties as a partner to tribal nations, and that that is not just a matter of distant history, but a present reality. And that is part of why it is so important and so welcome to have the uh, the consultations and the discussions that we're having now. We can't talk about jobs and infrastructure without acknowledging that many of America's original residents are living without clean water or without stable electricity, without public sewer access or indoor plumbing, sometimes without reliable public transit or broadband internet. Uh, too many have been asked to expect to drive on crumbling roads or to make homes in overcrowded buildings. And we know in the third decade of the 21st century that this is an unacceptable state of affairs. And that's why this administration, including my department, are at work to change that. From his very first days in office, President Biden made it clear that restoring this government's sacred relationship with tribal nations is a true priority. And the American Jobs Plan is part of that commitment. The president's proposal calls for tens of billions of dollars in direct infrastructure investments that will benefit tribal communities. With that plan, we will be in a position together to repair America's crumbling infrastructure and better care for the people and resources that support our country. And this time we're going to do it equitably and respectfully. Take road safety. So road safety matters to everyone, but especially for overburdened and underserved communities. Native Americans are five times more likely to lose their lives to traffic fatalities than white Americans. That's part of why it's so important that this plan includes $20 billion for road safety and doubles funding for the tribal transportation program. And it provides another $20 billion to repair dangerously unsafe bridges, many of which are on rural or tribal land. No one should have to risk their life in order to get to where they need to be. At the same time, we also know that Native American households are among the least likely to have access to a car, which is why we need to expand access to clean, reliable public transportation. The American Jobs Plan includes $80 billion in investments to expand and modernize our rail network and double the federal funding for public transit. And we are committed to ensuring that tribal leaders have the authority to decide how best to use these funds. At the Department of Transportation, we're very proud of our Tribal Transportation Self-Governance Program, which empowers tribal nations with greater control over how USDOT funds are administered in their communities, and it codifies the sovereign right to self-determination. All communities, large and small, deserve to be able to get around safely and affordably and deserve safe living conditions, which is why the plan provides several billion dollars for investments in tribal water infrastructure and funds a range of new affordable housing options so that more Native Americans can be confident of having access to clean water and live in comfortable modern housing. Now, the best way I would describe this plan is one that is themed around infrastructure, but built around jobs. It is the American Jobs Plan. It calls for $100 billion in job training programs at underserved, uh, for underserved students and communities, and it expands affordable broadband on tribal lands so that our young people have the tools that they need to compete in the digital economy. Now, that said, a lot of the most important labor that Americans do is unpaid. That's why the plan ensures that caregivers and domestic workers who are disproportionately likely to be Native women and women of color get the kinds of benefits and the kinds of protections that they deserve. This plan is not just an investment in physical infrastructure, it's an investment in people. And it's an investment in the land that supports people. 
as you know so well, climate justice is a key component of our agenda and every part of this plan from coastal resilience programs to uh, landscape uh, restoration efforts reflects that. The plan includes targeted funding for tribal resource management and irrigation. It includes transition assistance for tribal communities most affected by climate disasters. And it includes access to climate resilience grants for every tribe that wants to create a local climate plan. As the original stewards of the lands and waters of the Americas, tribal communities are invaluable partners in the shared fight against climate change. Tribal residents have endured centuries of mistreatment. It is not a coincidence that it is the, set of the, the descendants of settlers uh, who did not show regard for the stewardship uh, of those lands, uh, who wound up uh, then allowing uh, so much to fall into a state of disrepair. And so the time has come to recognize not only the need to make up for the mistakes of the past, but to look to the future. And that's what the American Jobs Plan does by providing critical support for tribal communities. This is an administration that is committed to honoring tribal sovereignty, to upholding solemn trust and treaty responsibilities and empowering self-governance. And I promise you that as long as we're here, tribal nations will have a seat at the table uh, with this department and with this administration. And uh, again, I'm glad that this discussion today is, is just one part of that. Uh, so together we are aspiring to make this plan a reality. And uh, we are delighted by the thought of what present and future generations uh, could be able to experience through the benefit of this plan. Uh, so I want to thank you again for the chance to be with you. I look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully on future visits to Washington when that's safe or uh, on visits to Indian country on our part. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Pawe.